I will not share my glory. You think you've accomplished something. Trust me on this. I will not share my glory. And I will not allow you to praise idols. Your praise belongs to me. And when you give your devotion and your attention to other things, I am insulted. Because the Lord is my name. And I will not share that with anyone else. Now, it's not because God is arrogant, but because he knows that that, that is in your best interest. Your God is that strong. He's that big. He's that powerful. He is that eternal. That's your God. He's your King. He's your Lord. He's your Father. Which brings us to the fourth. The fourth thing that you should do. And the final thing that we study here today. And that is that you are to seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. Look what Jacob said. He said, first of all, he says, I look for God in the crisis. He said, so Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face and my life was spared. What he was saying is, I have seen God face to face. What he was saying is, you, you, you need to see God in the crisis. Look for God in the crisis in the crisis, in the darkness that you're going through in your life, in those times of difficulty, quit looking for answers, solutions, more difficulties. Quit fearing, but rather look for God in the darkness. Start looking for God. Quit looking for the solution. Quit looking for the difficulties. Quit looking at the pain. It's all there. You know it's there. But where is God? Start looking for God. Look for the face of God. And one of the reasons the Bible tells us to look for the face of God is that we look for the face of God to see what God's desire is. It's like this. We identify looking at the face of God with pleasing God. That's the idea. When God says, seek my face, the idea is this, what he's saying is seek to please me. It's like this when Marsha and I were dating. Um, I mean, we still date, but I mean, before we got married, when we were dating, I would bring her something, you know, a little gift or something, because I wanted to please her. You know, I wanted to see her smile. And when I brought her a gift, I didn't look down at her feet. You know, I looked at her face. I wanted to see how she received it, what she thought about it. That's the way it is with God. God says, look at my face. See how I react to you. See how I respond to you in the crisis. See how I feel about you. It was in the face. It's in the face of God that we can see. So you seek the face of God. Seek to please Him so that He, so you can understand how He is responding. Now, will you see a face? I hope not. You know, because then I'll be visiting you in that little funny farm place. <laughs> but it's the idea that you are seeking the nature and character of God. What is it about God that I'm discovering in the middle of this crisis? How does God respond to me? What does God think about me? What does God want to do? And then what that means is that when we understand that God is there and that He is involved in our lives and that He wants to do something in our lives, then we understand that when we meet God in the crisis, it changes our life. Now, most people in a crisis know that their lives are going to be different. But they don't think about the fact that God is changing their life. You're in a crisis. Or you're going to go through a crisis. Or you know somebody who's in a crisis. In the middle of that crisis, yes, you know their lives are going to be different. They know they're going to be different. But what about if you begin to understand that God is changing your life? It's God. It's not that He wanted this crisis to happen, but He's going to use this experience in your life to change you, to become more of what He wants in and through your life. Think about that. Not just in your life, but through your life. 
Jacob met God in the crisis, and it changed his life. And we close with this verse, verse 30, chapter 32, verse 31. I love this. This is, such, this is just so remarkable. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hand. I want you to see two things here. First of all, the sun came up. The sun rose in the middle of the darkness. Remember how Jacob was at the very beginning of the night? He'd given up on everything. Passed everything up, pushed everything across the river. Given up. He had just decided it's over with. My life is done. In the middle of the darkness, he meets God. God deals with him and he begins to discover that God really does have a purpose and a plan for his life. And he changes his name from Jacob to Israel. And now he confronts God and God says, but listen, Jacob, don't play games with me. You want to know my name? Realize that I am the Lord. I am the supreme and absolute authority of your life. And I'm going to do something in and through your life as you depend on me. And the next thing they see.